This is going to be about the sin of rock music. Number one, we see rock music's connection with violence. And the condition of the world in Noah's day was that it was filled with violence. Genesis 6.11 says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Uh, rock music's connection with violence is undeniable. When the fighter comes out of the tunnels and wrestling and boxing and in MMA fights, what is the main music genre? It's rock and metal. And I'm not saying that's all, that's all there is or that's the only one, but what music gets you ready to fight? Rock or country? Rock or rap? Uh, the hard-sounding drums and guitars get you in the mood to knock someone's teeth out. And as a teenager, when you were on your way to a fight at the park or on the playground, what did you listen to? Rock music, heavy metal, Bullet for My Valentine, Metallica, Slipknot, Corn, Godsmack, Disturbed, whoever. And in the fight scenes in the movies, what is the music of choice? Heavy metal and rock music. Uh, when you listen to what they call screamo and death metal, does that make you full of love or full of hate? Matthew twenty four twelve says, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's talking about in the tribulation, the love of many is going to wax cold because of iniquity. But that's also true today where the more you sin, the more you watch others sin, the more sin gets ingrained in you, the less you're going to love. Sin-infested rock music will make you Love yourself and love your sinful pleasures, but it will make your love wax cold for everyone else. And this leads to treating other people wrong. It leads to putting the things of God aside. It fills you with thoughts of self and hate towards enemies, violence, and anything other than what Paul says in Philippians 4 and verse 8, where he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely... Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any, any praise, think on these things. And it's hard to think on these things when you're listening to a band like Imagine Dragons. Listening to that will do nothing but make you imagine a great red dragon, as Satan is called in Revelation 12.3. And that's why they have the devilish looking creatures dancing around in their video for thunder. You ever seen the video for thunder? which has literally over 1 billion YouTube views. Uh, what about their song, Demons? And here's some of the lyrics to their song, Demons. It says, when you feel my heat, look into my eyes. It's where my demons hide. It's where my demons hide. Don't get too close. It's dark inside. It's where my demons hide. So they're saying it's dark inside, and in their eyes is where their demons hide. In Matthew twelve forty three through 44, it says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from which I came out, and when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. So, some people's bodies, lost people's bodies, these rock singers' bodies are obviously the houses for unclean spirits. The same way our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, their houses... Their bodies are the houses where devils take up residence and then the devils communicate to us through them. And you know the verse I always use. It is so important for the days we're living in. 1 Corinthians fifteen thirty three it says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. And the band Imagine Dragons, that's evil communications when you're listening to that stuff you're listening to the spirit that's in them talk to you this way the devil can get his message out faster and the band imagine dragons they have catchy music that attracts people the music sounds good to the ears but is it good to put into your mind matthew twelve thirty four says O generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh, why do violent words and cuss words come out of a man? What are you putting in your mind? 
uh, music affects your brain just like drugs. Uh, when you listen to music, dopamine is released. When you listen to music, you enjoy, and it can be addictive. And once your brain knows that that's how you got that good, pleasurable feeling the last time, it tells you to go back to it. And that's why you want to listen to the same song over and over and over again. Uh, choose the right music to listen to. Addict yourself to the right music. Addict yourself to the right things. It's okay to be an addict as long as you're addicted to the right stuff. 1 Corinthians 16.15 says, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the min ministry of the saints. So they've addicted themselves to something, but it's something good. So it's not always bad to be addicted to something. Something I've noticed is that people in my life who grew up listening to music about drugs ended up on drugs. And my high school friends are on drugs that I was in high school with, and we listened to music about drugs. My sister listened to music about drugs. She's on drugs. And what you listen to highly influences you. Uh, the emo rock makes you act like a depressed teenager. And it's just funny seeing these 30- and 40-year-old rock singers sing about the same kind of trouble a lonely schoolgirl is going through at school right now. And a Christian listening to emo music makes zero sense whatsoever because Paul says in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. A good portion of rock music is about feelings of depression and suicide. And maybe you're so depressed because of the music you listen to. Some rock music triggers sadness and a super depressed feeling. And a lot of rock singers commit suicide themselves. And so you're listening to men sing to you and communicate to you through their music. Men who are at that point of depression where they're suicidal. The band 21 Pilots, who is pretty tame compared to a lot of bands, they have a lead singer who seems to be dealing with suicidal thoughts. And although he doesn't promote suicide, should we dwell on lyrics written by someone who is borderline suicidal? Lyrics that dwell on one's own sadness. Uh, this kind of music shows someone who is full of self, and it will make you full of self. It will keep you thinking about your own depressed thoughts. Second Timothy 3, 1 and 2 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Sitting around dwelling on your own sadness and your own problems and your own suicidal thoughts shows you are too concerned with self and this kind of music can make you that way or at least keep you remembering that you have that problem of depression and just last year chester bennington of the band lincoln park and chris cornell of the band sound garden and audio slave both committed suicide so you had two rock singers who influenced people for years with their music commit suicide and it's a common thing for lead singers to end their life and rock music can give you the idea that happiness comes from fame and fortune but they aren't happy hebrews eleven twenty five says choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season and the pleasure that comes from sin is only there when you are in the moment and once the moment passes it's over and you're depressed again until you start the sin over again and then after a while, the sin doesn't even bring happiness to you anymore. The thing about sin is that sin wrecks your life, your health, your body, your family. You take your whole family down with you. With sin, rock singers overdose on drugs. They drink themselves to death. They get STDs. They end up sick and looking like death. And so do the people that listen to their music many times. And the exceptions don't overthrow the rule. Proverbs 13, 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. The more you sin, the harder your life's going to be. And it may be fun to fornicate with all the women throwing themselves at you at first. As a rock star, it has pleasure of sin that lasts for a season. And sin is glorified in rock music. The world paints a pretty picture for sin. They make movies about these godless rock singers like Queen who the lead singer, Freddie Mercury, 
died of AIDS at the age of 45. And how did he get AIDS? How do people get AIDS? Through drug use and too much out of sex out of marriage. And all of these rock singers seem to leave this world early. Psalms 55, 23 says, But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. And some rock singers die so early, they don't live out half their days. They die so early that they are in a group called the 27 Club because they all died at the age of 27. Men like Kurt Cobain, the lead singer of Nirvana, Amy Winehouse, Jim Morrison, uh, Janis Joplin, Robert Johnson, Jimi Hendrix, Brian Jones. They sold out to Satan for fame and fortune. And when their time was up, it was up. And it may not have been a contract with paper and ink with the devil. But one day somewhere they decided they were going to live for the devil and get fame and fortune. And it didn't matter how many people their music took to hell with them. And 1 Kings 21, 20 talks about selling yourself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. But before you do this, you need to remember Hebrews 9, 27 says, But as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. Imagine going to hell as a rock singer. You sang music that made light of hell, made fun of hell, made fun of God, made fun of the Bible, and you gave glory to hell. And then you lift up your eyes being in torments in the very place that you made light of in your music and influenced people and brainwashed people into thinking that salvation was a joke and that they're just going to live eternity as a party. And like it's nothing, like they don't even care, the band Pretty Reckless has a song that says, I'm going to hell. Just like they don't even care even though they still have breath in their lungs, and they could come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel and not have to go to hell. And the devil chose his pride and his ungodly lusts over heaven. He didn't care if he would go to hell. He'd rather go to hell than to bow down to God Almighty, just like his rock singers. They'd rather go to hell than to not be famous and rich. And if you're saved then your rock is better than the rock of this world. Deuteronomy 32, 30, and 31 says, How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up, for their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. So their rock is not as our rock. Our rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. And Matthew sixteen eighteen says, And I say, I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The rock is Jesus in that verse as well, not Peter. You need to build your house on the rock, as Luke six forty eight talks about. And if you build your whole life on worldly junk, then you're not going to make it. If everything you have is material and worldly, then everything you have is going to be burned up one day. And those fires in California can't touch the fire at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where Second Thessalonians 1.8 says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. They can't tough out the fire that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ and the fires of hell. But rock music is about the temporal stuff, the material stuff. Uh, Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's what rock music will make you do. That's what music, the popular music nowadays, will make you do. Uh, Nickelback had the song Rockstar, an entire song about how everyone wants to be a rock star and do drugs and go to the bars and fornicate. And it's nothing but flesh and setting your affection on things down here. What about rock music and satanic symbolism? The rock music is full of satanic hand signs, like when they have the devil horns, two fingers up and three fingers down, the all-seeing eye symbolism, the upside-down crosses, and one of the characters on the rock video games, a guitar hero is a goat man, a half man, half goat, picturing the devil, the Baphomet character, which represents the devil and Satanism. 
It's the appearance of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22 says abstain from all appearance of evil. And you can't get around that verse. That's a tough verse that can knock so many things out of your life that your flesh loves. You can debate all day long whether or not Christian rock is okay unless you consider that verse. Any rock music is the appearance of evil. Although we shouldn't think we are better than others because of clothes. The Bible talks about clothes we shouldn't wear. It talks about the attire of an harlot in Proverbs. Peter talks about wearing modest apparel and the clothes associated with rock music. Even the CCM and Christian rock stuff are all worldly and for the most part look just like a regular rocker's clothes. And this is the appearance of evil. If you're a Christian rocker and someone sees you out, uh, they're going to think you like secular rock music. I mean, I know some Christians even who are King James Bible believers and they'll go out dressed up like a biker with a big skull on their shirt with like a death metal band on their shirt and to the lost world, they look just like one of them. And there's just no getting around it. Look at the Christian death metal bands and put them side by side with regular death metal bands. You can't tell them apart. I mean, you can play their music, you can't tell it apart. I mean, it may say the, the lyrics are cleaner. And Christian death metal makes no sense to me because even though my body is going to die, the new me will never die. Christianity is not associated with death. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 9 and 10 says, But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. John five twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Uh, Jesus is so far from death that when he was around, nobody could even stay dead. He rose from the dead, and he makes us pass from death unto life. And if my body dies before the rapture, the grave won't be able to hold my body down. Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave, so death will never defeat me. Rock music is the appearance of evil, because when you listen to it in the car, people think you're listening to regular rock music. And if I'm in a store that's playing Christian rock, I don't know it's Christian until they say Lord or God Almighty or Holy, Holy, Holy or something like that. And other than that, it sounds just like the secular bands on the radio. And the Christian rock goes along with the sinful world. They make their music sound just like the current popular rock songs on the radio so they can just sell more records. They're fooling you. And I remember before I was saved, I was in a youth group at a church and the youth leader would play Christian rock music on a stereo during the youth meetings on Wednesday nights. And I didn't like the Christian rock then. I liked the real thing because Christian rock sounds like a cheap off brand of the real thing. You know that the Christian rock does not sound as good as the regular rock. You have to admit that. And I didn't know rock music was wicked at the time. But at the time, as a lost person, I did think it was weird that he played that at church. And I remember a young girl who was who also wasn't saved, coming in and saying the music made her want to kill herself. And sometimes lost people have more sense than saved people who love the world. So this guy, my youth leader, he's trying, to, he's trying to be influencing a bunch of teenagers, yet he has us listening to rock music and watching Chronicles of Narnia. Just a huge lack of discernment on his part, and it was the appearance of evil. As a lost person... I even knew that something was off. And you're not allowed to say anything about the contemporary Christian music today. Even though the old Christians and the old saints from, from days gone by who are dead are just really old now, they were against it for years. But now since the world has said, judge not that you be not judged so much, it's got Christians scared to say anything against anything. They think they're going to be judging if they say anything about it. So they just go along with it. And I've seen some preachers who are King James Bible believers at Bible believing churches, but then when they get called over to like a contemporary church, they use the ESV and a New King James, 
and they just go along with everything that's going on there. Like the contemporary music's okay. Like the the new Bibles are okay. And there's something crazy, but the new music, the contemporary music, it's always associated with the new Bibles more times than not. But Christian rock is nothing but keeping the door open for regular rock music. And when those preachers go to those churches to preach at those churches, which there's nothing wrong with that, they shouldn't get their new Bibles. They should stay with the King James Bible. They shouldn't go along with the bad music. And maybe they can influence people for the better. Because the Christian rock music, it just keeps the taste in your mouth for worldly music. It's like getting off a hard drug by using a lesser drug in its place. You end up going back to it. It sounds too similar. And the thing is, secular rock music is more catchy and sounds better. It sounds way better. Uh, Your flesh likes the real thing better than the weak, watered-down stuff. And a lot of these churches, like Andy Stanley's church, have gone so far that they don't just do the CCM thing. They'll play secular rock songs like Renegade. And I've seen churches play Eminem. They've come so far that they can't just take the Christian rock. They want the real thing because it sounds better. It's more appealing to the flesh. The Christian rock is just the off-brand. And there has to be a line drawn somewhere. If you don't just draw a line somewhere, so say, okay, you accept the contemporary Christian music, but not the real hardcore Christian stuff. Well, 10 years down the road, your kids will accept, accept the real hard stuff. 10 years down the road, they'll accept even more hard stuff. It's just a downward spiral. You have to draw the line somewhere. Ephesians 5.19 5, says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. The rock music is spiritual, but it ain't the type of, type of spiritual you want. You want to listen to stuff that glorifies God, not the flesh. And this CCM junk gets to your foot before it gets to your heart. And some of the songs start out okay, but then it gets to that loud drum solo at the end. Or that loud guitar solo. And it can't be just clean words. The beat also has to be clean. And you know if the beat is clean. And the words are clean then it's okay. But if the if the words are okay but the beat's not right. Then it's not clean. If you open the door for CCM. The contemporary Christian music. Then the door is open for the devil to bring in other stuff. And a preacher not wearing a tie is the least of your worries. When you get the CCM, you get the new Bibles, and you get a bunch of people going around saying, Judge not lest you be judged, because uh, they they know that deep down that what they're doing is wrong, and they don't want to point the finger at anybody because they know what they're doing is wrong. So the preacher can't say anything about sin anymore or about hell anymore. And the fact that he ain't wearing a suit and a tie anymore is the least sinful thing that's going on because you got the new bibles you got somebody that's not going to say anything against sin they're going to end up accepting the sodomite stuff in the churches and and unless he's talking about they're not going to go out and save souls from hell by bringing them in with the christian rock music then he doesn't mention hell and even in in the independent fundamental baptist crowd if you watch a lot of preachers and a lot of the big well-known evangelists then they're embracing the contemporary stuff little by little, more and more all the time. And what they're doing just a little bit, the next guys in line will embrace it completely. And if the contemporary Christian music was wrong before, then it's still wrong. Listen to the old preachers. They were against it. If it was wrong then, then it's wrong now. But if you're not saved then you don't need to be worrying this moment about not listening to rock music. Your main worry right now needs to be coming to the Lord Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believing the gospel. And Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. If you look at 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, he says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which you also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. 
and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died for you because you're a sinner. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Jesus Christ died shedding his blood for your sins. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And he, Jesus Christ was buried and rose again the third day. When he rose again the third day, that showed he was sinless and that showed that he was God in the flesh. And that shows that he has power to save you. And the Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It says in Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel, then you can be saved and have eternal life. But if you're not saved, the best thing you can do is come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are. And then after you do this, worry about getting the rock music out of your life. And it may not come right away. You may have to work at it. And if you're a Christian and you've heard this message, you need to get the rock music out of your life. Uh, don't let Satan have control of your life. Surrender your life to Jesus. Not to stay saved or to get saved, but because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to live right. But this has been the sin of rock music.